thank you to uh, Brother Walker. You know, it's something that I've observed. Uh, have, have you all noticed that all of the speakers have finished on time? And, and I've been trying to figure this thing out. How is Brother Walker able to do that? Well, it's where he's sitting. See, he's in your blind. See, I'm right here. He's in my blind spot. And I don't know if he's coming up on me, but he's, he, it's where he's sitting is how he's able to get everyone to finish on time. Because I saw Brother Elder uh, one time looking at his seat. And he didn't, he didn't sit in that seat because he knew Brother Walker was going to be sitting there. Brother Walker, thank you uh, for uh, doing a great job. Thank you for the invitation. And thank you for assigning me this topic. Because there have been many times when there were certain things that I wanted in my life certain things that I wanted to do in my life, and they did not happen. And as I was working on this message, I, it helped me. So I, I don't know if I'm going to help you all, but my preparation helped me. The only, really, Brother Walker, the only problem I have, you didn't give me this assignment 20 years ago. It would have really uh, helped me. Because what this, and, and I want to tell you the purpose uh, of, of my lesson today, I think that's important, uh, is the key to understanding this message today is to focus on God and not on things. To focus on wisdom and understanding and not on things. Because, see, I was always told, Brother Nate, I was always told to start with the end in mind. But as I was working on this, no, Brother Bobby Tennant, no, no, no. Start with God in mind. And start with wisdom in mind. And the Lord will take care of the rest. Let us all stand. I know we, we've just ate and we're going to stand for the reading of the word, if you can. If you can't, I understand. Genesis, the chapter is three. I, I got to make sure I keep you all uh, awake and we don't want anybody's uh, heads nodding or anything like that. Genesis, the chapter is three. And the verse is number six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. You may take your seats. My assigned topic this afternoon are things we desire. Making us wise. Yes. The story of Adam and Eve is mankind at its best, but also at its worst. It is a story of great, it's really the story of the human condition. It's a story of greatness, but also wretchedness. Created in the image of God. Greatness created, Genesis 2 and 7, from the dust of the ground, wretchedness. So though man is created in the image of God, he has limitations and he also has flaws. Can I get a, like a half an amen for flaws? I mean, I mean we, we all have flaws, don't we? In the Garden of Eden, was beauty and tranquility. Adam and Eve were, were living their best life. They're, they were living their lives in harmony with God, and, and they had an intimate and a close relationship with him. They, they walked around uh, in the garden with no clothing 
own and they were not ashamed. Genesis 2 and verse 25. So, so the devil, the, the snake in this story decided to go after the best of God's creation. Uh, he decided to go after Adam and Eve and uh, he decided to push them beyond their limits and to push them uh, into their flaws. And I don't know if you know it or not, but the devil still does that today. The, the text says that uh, the snake was more cunning than any beast of the field. And there are some, there are some cunning beasts that are out there today. Uh, that television that we have sitting right in our den is a very cunning beast. Social media, a very uh, cunning uh, uh, beast. But uh, so what the devil does, now watch him. He creates doubt uh, in the mind of Eve and he uses flattery to destroy the beauty and the tranquility uh, in the garden. Watch what he says to Eve. He says, did God really say to you that you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? It was a loaded question designed to uh, get whatever uh, the devil wanted. And Eve replies to him in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. He said, she says, no, we can eat from any tree, but there's one exception. God said, this one tree, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it if you do. You will surely die. But, but watch this old devil now. Uh, watch his cunningness. And then he says, you shall not die. God knows that if you eat, you will become like God. Now, uh, this idea of becoming like God appeals to uh, one of the flaws that Eve has. See, Eve begins to, uh, based on what the devil was saying, Eve begins to think too highly, and we do that, church. Uh, she began to think too highly uh, of herself. Eve believes she is somebody. Why? Well, God gave both Adam and Eve dominion where? In three different realms. The Bible says that they had dominion over the birds of the air. They had dominion over the fish uh, in the sea and every beast on land. Well, uh, dominion is equated uh, with power. Now, Eve, because of her dominion, another flaw, uh, uh, dominion, uh, she has power uh, because she has naming rights. He gave those to both uh, Adam and Eve. The dominion, the power leads to pride. And, and I don't know if you know it or not, but power is progressive. The more power you get, somebody say amen. The more you want. Right now, right now in many of our churches, we are having uh, power struggles. Folk are arguing about, well, who's in charge? Well, the last time I checked, is that clock right? The last time I checked, Jesus Christ. Why would there be a power struggle if Jesus uh, is uh, the head of the church? But watch this now. Watch what Eve does. Uh, so Eve decides to elevate her own wisdom, knowledge of good and evil, over her knowledge of the love of God and his commands. I'm going to say that one again. Eve makes a decision. She decides that I'm going to elevate my own wisdom, knowledge of good and evil, because that's the case that he presented to her. Knowledge of good and evil over her love for God and his commands. Anybody in here remember Jesus in John chapter 14 at verse number 15? What does Jesus say? He says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. 
Eve now is primed to go beyond her limits caused by uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 16, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Well, there are three things that I want us to focus on this morning. The question, uh, this afternoon rather, are the things we're desiring making us wise? Well, the three things that we desire that cause us a problem, Brother Warner, number one is power. Somebody say power. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Somebody say power. Number one is power. Yeah. We desire power. We attach ourselves to power. Brother Walker doesn't know it or not, but he's sitting in a seat of power. He's sitting over on the right side. I'm not saying he's desiring power, but that's the seat he's sitting in. Number two, uh, the things that we attach. Our, see, the problem is attachment. We attach ourselves to power, number one. We attach ourselves to possessions, number two. And then the third thing that we attach ourselves to is pride. Uh, in other words, uh, so do the things that uh, we desire make us wise? Well, in one word, no. But let me tell you why. It's attachment. Attachment to these things. Let's, let's look at power. Um, I don't have time to go into it real deep. But if you go to 1 Kings chapters 1, 2, and 3, you remember David had gotten old and he had not selected somebody to take his place. Well, he has two sons, doesn't he? Adonijah uh, and also Solomon. Now, uh, Absalom, uh, the oldest boy, is already dead. So what is that? So there's a, a power vacuum that is created. So what then happens? Both of them, Adonijah had his group. Solomon had his group that wanted him to be king. So finally, Solomon, watch this, watch this. Solomon had to kill his own brother to protect his place uh, in the kingdom. But the thing that I like about Solomon is this, however, he was humble enough uh, to ask God not in his prayer in chapter 3, not for power, he asked God for wisdom. First Kings chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. But, and, oh man, and I, I love my God. Watch my God, oh, so Solomon goes to him. He says, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. God came to him uh, in a dream and he said, uh, Solomon, because you didn't ask for riches, because, see, that, Brother Walker, that was my problem. See, I was focused on the end and not focused on the almighty God. He says, because you have not asked for power, because you have not asked for chariots. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give <laughs> brother Bobby. Oh man. I don't know if we understand what I'm talking about. God said, I'm going to give you what you did not ask for. Any evangelism program will thrive if you talk to people about the things that God has given you. <laughs> Man, is evangelism a bad word? Let me say that again. Any evangelism program will thrive if you tell people what God has given you and you did not even ask for. Well, Brother Barry, what's the problem with pride? Well, pride corrupts. You don't believe me? Look at the political climate. I don't, I don't have time to go into it. Plus, I make probably half of y'all in here mad at me. Uh, but look at the political climate. Power corrupts. The more power you get, the more you want. Power sometimes is easy to get, but to keep it, well, in order for Solomon to keep his power, he had to cut a deal with Egypt. He had to kill his brother. Somebody said, well, Brother Barry, what about 
All that killing. Well, that's what made David famous, you remember. Saul had did what? Killed his what? Thousand. Uh, and David killed what? His two. If you are a monarch in those days, you were going to have to kill somebody. Power will isolate you. You don't know if people like you because of your power or they like you because of you. Let me move on. Because, man, this Arizona time is faster. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, the next thing, the next thing uh, is possessions. Do you remember the story of the rich young ruler? Matthew chapter 19, verses 21 and 22. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have. Give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. But the thing that we always forget about in those days, if you were going to be a disciple, brother Mike, you had to go and follow Jesus. You had to give up everything and follow Jesus. Well, the Bible says that the rich young ruler uh, became sorrowful. Why? Well, he had kept all of the commandments. But, and, and, ooh, and I don't even really have time to get into, because see, those commandments were only the ones that related to man. The ones that were relate to God were not even in there. But, 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 but the Bible says, he was too attached. Attached. Brother Walker, attachment is the issue. Attachment is he was too attached to his possession. He had many possessions and he would not uh, give uh, them up. The things that we possess will never fulfill us. Uh, Brother Minor already talked. About, I told him he was all off in my message. He already talked about the lottery. When the lottery gets up to a billion dollars, we, we, we lose our mind. We go crazy. <laughs> y'all trying to pretend like y'all not buying no? Well, I, I, well, I guess that's a Texas thing. Uh, brother, brother Crosby, uh, Brother Tennant, I know we buy a uh, lot of tickets in Texas, I guess, but, but folk go crazy. But the folk who, who win those lotteries, they end up broke. Uh, if you're too attached to your possessions, then uh, you're, there's always something else that you want to own. You're never satisfied. Uh, and then the third thing, as I get ready to close this out here, the third thing then, uh, the first one was power. The next thing uh, was possessions. And then the last thing, was pride. Ease pride caused her to want to be like God, knowing both good and evil. So what she did, she elevated herself. And see, we can easily think uh, too highly of ourselves. And not only that, watch this, ladies. She convinced her husband. Uh, she took the time to communicate with him. And man, I wish I had time uh, to deal with communication. You know, you know, oftentimes, many folk uh, communicate to uh, manipulate. Woo. <laughs> they they communicate. Let, let me say that over here. Uh, many people communicate to uh, manipulate and not understand. They'll call me. They say, Brother Barry, are you busy? What I'm saying now. <laughs> you know, I, well, how do I answer that? Uh, am I? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> well, but, but see, they just go come out and say, Brother Barry, can you do this for me or that for me and I'll do it. Don't call me and manipulate me. Am I busy? Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> well, seven minutes. If it's power, Possessions and pride that bring us down. What then makes us wise? In Solomon's case, it was humility and prayer. Don't have time to read it, but you remember 1 Kings 3.12. 
13, God said he was pleased with Solomon's prayer. See, that was a problem with me. Focus on the wrong things in my prayer. I should have been saying, God, help me be wise. But I was doing what they taught me in corporate America. Thinking about the end when you think about the end when you begin. No, focus on the almighty God of heaven and he will take care of you. James chapter one, verses five and six. If any man likes wisdom, let him ask God who gives all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. Let him ask how in faith. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God, nothing doubting. So uh, he who doubts is like a wave uh, of the sea, tossed and driven by the wind. The next thing that we need to do is fear the Lord, Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of knowledge. But what, but what, but fools despise wisdom uh, and instruction. The fear of the Lord refers to a deep reverence uh, and respect for the word of God. It suggests that true wisdom begins with acknowledging God and his authority and seeking his guidance in all things. Don't you know that for Eve, the outcome would have been altogether different. And she had to say, well, hang on, Mr. Devil. Let me talk to my God. Oh, I mean, I don't know if y'all are praying with me in here. Let me talk to God about it before I make any rash decision. The next thing is listening and understanding. And let me say this to the Lord's church, that in the church, y'all, we need to do a better Job of listening. In many places, uh, we're losing our young people. And don't you misunderstand me. I'm not talking about changing the gospel. I believe in this Bible. I believe in preaching it in season and out of season. But what I'm saying, we need to listen sometimes to what our young people are saying to us. They are taking those suggestions over to the Baptist church. Well, <laughs> Brother Walker said, stay in your text. So let me get back in my text. <laughs> Listening <laughs> and understanding. I got three minutes. Proverbs uh, chapter 2, 2 through 6. So that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Verse 3, yes. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek it, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand uh, the fear of the Lord and find knowledge. Verse number six, for uh, the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. These verses emphasize the importance of actively seeking wisdom and understanding as one would search for precious treasures. It encourages individuals to listen to wise counsel and to pursue knowledge. And then finally, the last thing that we should be doing is avoiding foolish pride. Proverbs 3 and 7. Do not be wise. See, that, that was Eve's problem. She, she thought to elevate, put herself on the same level. We, we don't have any business on the level with God. She was deceived by that old devil. Do not uh, be wise in your own eyes. See, when I'm wise in my own eyes, I don't seek counsel. Brother Walker, that was my problem. When I started in the pulpit, I thought I knew it all. Yeah. After all, I'm the preacher around here. <laughs> and don't have, a, didn't have enough sense to ask somebody. 
about some of this stuff that was coming at me. That's how you tear up churches. We must learn how to seek counsel. Uh, find somebody. My, my time is gone. Find somebody that you respect. Get yourself a mentor. I, I, mean, I mean, even if you just, uh, you just want to call them and just, just talk stuff through with them sometimes. Uh, we, we must learn to do that. But this old devil, he didn't learn his lesson. Um, he went after Eve, Adam and Eve, and seemingly he won. But then in Matthew chapter 4, he went after my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus fasted. For 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and uh, that old devil said, yes, if, if, putting doubt in his mind, if you be the son of God, turn these stones uh, into bread. And then he said it again. He took him to a high place uh, in the holy city took him up to the top of the temple. He said, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. I can't give it all to you. I only got 13 seconds. And then he showed him all the kingdoms of the world on a high mountain. And I believe when he showed him all those kingdoms, he showed him the Lord's church. And he said, devil, I can't bow down to you. Thank you all.